It just requires getting still, closing your eyes, putting your attention on your heart, changing your breath so that you move into the present moment. And when you slow your breathing down, you slow your brain waves down. When you slow your brain waves down, now you're accessing your autonomic nervous system. So then you train a person how to open their heart and feel an elevated emotion. And it takes a little practice. And just like a flower that, that takes time to bloom, mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. takes a little bit of time. But if mm -hmm. you work in trading the resentment, the frustration or the impatience for gratitude, appreciation and thankfulness, and you keep at it, there'll come a moment where that system switches on. I think this is a time in history where it's not enough to know. Mm. This is a time in history to know how. I think we're in an age of information, and in an age of information, ignorance is a choice. And because of technology, we have access to so much content, and information creates awareness. And awareness is consciousness, and you can't have consciousness without energy. They're, they work together. So there's an energetic change, I think, that's taking place in the world right now, where people are so informed that old models, old paradigms are beginning to break down, mm -hmm. whether it's the medical model or the religious model, the education model, journalism, uh, the economy, you know, um, politics, it's all beginning to uh, come to the surface because something else has to come out. And, and I think that one of the things that uh, people are realizing is that you don't have to be a Buddhist monk to do this or uh, a nun with 40 years of devotion. You just got to understand the formula. And just like any skill or anything you learn, you got to go from thinking to doing to being. You got to take knowledge, you, you create the experience, and if you keep doing it over and over again, you start getting a skill or you start getting wise about how to do it. We gained so much knowledge about what that transformational process looks like. Right. In other words, I can tell you without a doubt that if you're analyzing your life right now within some disturbing emotion, that 100% of the time you're going to make your brain worse. If you Be think about your life. If you're stuck in an emotion, oh, like you're frustrated, yeah, you're yeah. angry, you're fearful, resentful, resentful and you're thinking within that emotional state. In other words, mm -hmm. you can't think greater than how you feel. That means then you were thinking in the past because those emotions are a record or residue of the past. So we see people in the, in the process of change that are analyzing in, uh, in, in duality or polarity. That kind of drives the brain into higher states of arousal mm. and, and further away from true change. Mm. So we did, uh, we've done thousands and thousands and thousands of brain scans. And, and we now know that there's a formula to create greater brain coherence, greater brain efficiency, to make your brain work better. And when mm. your brain works better, you work better. At the same time, it requires a clear intention and an elevated emotion to begin to change your energy and to change your life. And nobody changes until they change their energy. Let's stop telling the story of your past and let's start telling the story of your future. And, and people who aren't defined by a vision of the future for the most part are left with memories of the past. The, your brain is a record of the past. It's an artifact of everything you've learned and experienced at this moment. So most people wake up in the morning and they start thinking about their problems. Yeah. And those problems are memories that are tattooed in the brain that are associated to certain people and things at certain times and places. So the, mom, the person wakes up clean slate. They start thinking about their problems they're thinking in the past. You gotta labor to get that person beyond the emotions that keep them tacked or anchored to the past. And yes, it takes an effort to do that, but if you keep working with the formula, you'll reach that elegant moment where there's a liberation of energy. Mm. And now your body, as the unconscious mind, the objective mind is not believing, it's living in the same past experience 24 hours a day because you're liberating the body from that emotional state. If you're not being defined by a vision of the future, it just means to me that you're more in love with your past mm. than you are with the future. So how do you teach people to believe in a future that they can't see or experience with their senses yet, but they've thought about enough times in their mind that their brain has literally changed to look like the event has already occurred? The latest research in neuroscience says that's absolutely possible. Mm. We know that. And how do you teach a person to select a new possibility in their future? and begin to emotionally embrace that future before it's made manifest to such a degree that their body as their unconscious mind is believing it's living in that future reality in the present moment mm -hmm. and they're signaling new genes and new ways ahead of the environment 
what happens to your immune system when you do that? Well, it turns out we've done an experiment. Just 10 minutes a day, three times a day with 120 people, trading resentment, frustration, fear for gratitude, mm -hmm. appreciation, and thankfulness, measuring their immune response, the, the chemical immunoglobulin A, your primary defense against bacteria and viruses, the best flu shot you'll ever get lives right. with, innately within you. Turns out when you're frustrated, when you're impatient, when you're fearful, the immune system dials down because you're in emergency. It's not, it's, all your energy is going for some threat in your outer world. There's no energy in your inner world for growth and repair. But how do you turn that around? So then as people begin to open their heart, can that chemical begin to, to um, elevate? Mm -hmm. Four days, 50% change in the 120 people. Their, their IGA levels went up 50% in four days. Wow. That's, your body's immune system is now upregulating genes that are making proteins and immunoglobulins and, and antibodies that you don't need a flu shot. In other words, your inner state is greater than your outer world. Mm -hmm. So then just by doing that, we now know that your immune system is going to get stronger by the same means. Take 120 people or 50 people and measure 7,500 gene regulations. Okay, in four days, two genes that suppress cancer growth and tumors are activated and upregulated. The genes that stimulate stem cells to go to damaged tissues and repair them, upregulated. The gene for oxidative balance is upregulated. Anti-cancer, anti-aging, mm. anti-heart disease, anti-stroke, anti-neurodegenerative, anti-inflammatory, anti-microbial, just your body's naturally doing this. The gene for neurogenesis. The growth of new neurons in response to novel experiences and learning. This is four days. The mm. gene switches on. Uh, the, the gene for uh, more balance in the pituitary and the pancreas. The gene for the microtubules of the cells, the, the, little, the little fibers that respond to energy and frequency. Right. So in four days, we now know that you can change your genetic destiny if you just practice the inner work. We have research to show that 60 days of meditation five days a week will lengthen your life. The wow. telomeres, the little shoestrings on the end of your DNA get longer. That means your biological age is changing. So we, we have the evidence now to show people what's possible. So it requires a coherent brain, mm -hmm. and we now know that there's a formula for that, and we've got beautiful research to show that people can do it. They just have to practice. And it requires a coherent heart because resentment, frustration, impatience creates a very incoherent <laughs> heart. Yeah. And when that heart becomes incoherent, you stop trusting yourself. There's no energy there. You, get, you stop trusting in your future. If it requires a coherent brain and a coherent heart, then we have to train people uh -huh. how to self-regulate. So we've done thousands and thousands of measurements. We've partnered with the Heart Math Institute to teach people how to create and sustain heart coherence. It just requires getting still, closing your eyes, putting your attention on your heart, changing your breath so that you move into the present moment. And when you slow your breathing down, you slow your brain waves down. When you slow your brain waves down, now you're accessing your autonomic nervous system. So then you train a person how to open their heart and feel an elevated emotion. And it takes a little practice. And just like a flower that, that takes time to bloom, mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. takes a little bit of time. But if mm -hmm. you work in trading the resentment, the frustration or the impatience for gratitude, appreciation and thankfulness, and you keep at it, there'll come a moment where that system switches on